I'll go straight away to um, first go to API ICP. Let's see what it has. Um, as you can see here, I've gone to um, API ICP website. Um, so if you filter it by 580 risk based inspection, um, you can see that you can give this exam in person or remote proctoring. In previous webinars, I've talked about uh, uh, how you register, how you attend the exam, and um, what you need to do, but I'll go briefly here as well. So once you open a free account with uh, API, as you can see here, apply step two, and you give your references uh, for your experience. And the experience is, uh, if you are an engineer, you need one year. If you have two years uh, degree in engineering or technology, two years. If you have a high school diploma, three years. And you have no formal education at all, it is five years. So that is a minimum requirement as experience wise and education wise. Um, so the exam information, you go in person. Um, so once you register, you select that window for the exam. Uh, as you can see here on schedule and fees, you can click on that and find out uh, normally hold uh, three times a year. Uh, so you have up to four times to attend the exam, reschedule it, paying the fees. Uh, so once uh, you register and they verify your experience, uh, they'll send you an email authorization and uh, the API and with a link to Prometric Test Center. And from there, you can choose the slot uh, uh, and the time and the date uh, for your nearest test center if you're doing in person. Um, if you're do doing remote proctoring, you can select that but one. And uh, at the time of regis uh, uh, registering for the exam. And uh, so the test center location wouldn't be important because they will be proctoring you, watching you remotely. As you are watching me, there would be an invigilator watching you and you do the exam. There is the same requirements, uh, security requirements applies. You should have a valid government issued photo ID, which is a passport or a drive, driving license, for example. Um, and uh, it used to be 80 questions, 70 are a scorable question and 10 are not scored. Uh, they call it pretest question. Um, so, uh, from August 2021, it's 80 are scored and 10 are not scored. So total of 90 questions. So you don't know which one are scored or non-scored. So you have to attend the... Thank you very much. Um, so which one are scored or not scored. Um, so you can look at the exam tutorial. Please have a look at it if you are attending the exam. Uh, so it will tell you exactly what's happening and it will answer many questions. And so you will have 10 minutes uh, to learn the, how the buttons work. You know, the flag of button is uh, particularly useful uh, because there is no negative marking. Answer all the questions. At the end, you can come back, allow 15, 20 minutes or half an hour to look, look, look at all those flagged off questions that you are not absolutely sure but you answer it anyway, just uh, have a review of that. Uh, so the minute your exam starts, um, the clock starts ticking, it's 195 minutes, you have plenty of time, even for 90 questions. Now, the reason why is it, uh, there are pre-test question or non-scored question and they're shuffled together, so you don't know which one is scored, so you have to answer all of them, all the 90 questions. Um, now, the reason is that API um, does a job analysis um, for that particular certification, in this case, 580. Uh, so based on what they, an API 580 risk based inspection um, inspector need to know, they will uh, design the questions, right? Um, and then they add question as and when. So that's a live data bank. <clears throat> so this question is normally uh, designed by one subject matter expert and then checked by three other subject matter experts. 
for clarity and whether it is relevant to the knowledge of an API 580 inspector. Uh, so once that is done, that is used still as a temporary or pretest question. Uh, so they wanna see that whether people could have answered sufficient number of people, whether it exam that those questions were not challenged. So once it's past the second stage um, of control, then it goes into permanent data question data bank. So that's why you have these pretest questions. Okay. So practically, you won't find much here actually, because it says uh, the only reference document is API 580 um, uh, recommended practice. And remember, it's a recommended practice, so it's not mandatory but it's actually mostly used as an aid to API uh, 510, 570, 653. And if you go to all of these codes, they uh, have accepted API 580. So uh, all these codes, they use uh, half-life rule. That means you um, calculate the corrosion rate, um, the thinning of the material uh, per year, and then the remaining thickness that is allocated to the corrosion, you divide it by the corrosion rate per year, and then you get the, um, and then divided it by two, so half-life. Uh, so you say, okay, if this can, you know, with the same corrosion rate, it can survive this piping or this pressure vessel or this storage tank, say 10 years, uh, and then it will be uh, the allocated corrosion allowance that we have given for the thickness, it would be fully exhausted. Uh, so divided by half. So you'll say, say by next, uh, in five years time, we'll check it again, uh, just to be safe. Now, API 580 actually tries to sort of increase that half life rule. So if API 580 is used, uh, all these codes, 510, 570, 653, for pressure vessel piping and a storage tank, they accept API uh, 580 assessment uh, verdict. Uh, 